Okay, guys, welcome back. So we just finished talking about the benefits to having knowledge management systems. And next thing we're going to talk about briefly is the steps in implementing a knowledge management system. All right. And so there's basic five basic things that we, we need to evaluate and look at. Number one is determine the organization's needs. Number two, locate knowledge sources. Number three, choose systems to gather and house information. Number four, compile, confirm, and circulate knowledge. And number five is maintain the knowledge system. So when we determine the organization's needs, um, it's just important to remember that to get anywhere, you have to know where you are and decide where you want to be. And that's going to help you in terms of your vision as you begin to evaluate and implement your knowledge management system and determine what it is that your organization needs. So it's the same here in terms of determining the organization's uh, needs. All right. So again, to get anywhere, you have to know where you are and decide where you want to be. And it's the same when you implement a knowledge management system. At this point, the organization believes it has knowledge that isn't being used effectively or that it may be lost to retirement, downsizing, or simply forgetting. It also believes that knowledge is valuable, useful, and worth saving. This is when the learning professional's understanding of instructional design will be vital. The same needs analysis process that initiates training design also serves as a starting point for knowledge management. So again, you need to spend some time and figure out where it is that you are now and where is it that you want to be. So that's the first step in determining your organizational needs. Next is to locate knowledge sources. Um, at this point, the team that you have working on your project that's working on your CAM initiative must identify areas of knowledge and locate subject matter experts, information sources, and documents that already exist in the organization, as well as probable sources of important unwritten wisdom. All of these things are going to go towards developing your knowledge management system based on your organizational needs. The learning professional will be able to call on those same operations and product specialists he or she uses for validation of training information to serve as resources and to help identify others who have access to the most current information. So it's important to understand that you need to be familiar with the knowledge management sources and basically what we're talking about here is uh, probably those companies that can provide you with a knowledge management system or an information system based on the needs of your organization. But it's also critical that you evaluate the needs of your organization by talking to your employees. Uh, they possess a considerable wealth of knowledge and so accessing them and determining the needs of your organization based on what they know is going to be critical as you begin to uh, implement your knowledge management system. Next, you need to choose systems to gather and house information. When it has been identified where knowledge can be captured, the team is better equipped to select methods to use in gathering and storing the knowledge. In this phase of the initiative, you serve as one of the knowledge experts charged with identifying the best ways to gather knowledge, validate it, organize it and store it so that it is accessible to those who need it. Your role is vital in the process of selecting solutions that best suit your organization's needs, culture, technology, and capabilities. So choosing the system that you're going to use to gather and house information uh, oftentimes is one of the most critical parts of the implementation of the knowledge management system uh, because typically um, once you implement this system, um, you're going to be stuck with it for a while. Um, and so some of the things you need to consider is um, as you look further down the road and through your visions is, will you need this knowledge management system to be able to talk to another knowledge management system elsewhere, uh, maybe by a different vendor? And is that possible for these systems to talk to each other? Uh, so there's a lot that goes into uh, choosing a system and 
how that system is going to work within your organization. And that's going to be critical as you begin to evaluate these things. Um, because like I said, once you get that system, you're going to be married to it for some time and you need to make sure that that knowledge management system, that information system is going to meet your organizational needs. Next is compile, confirm, and circulate knowledge. Uh, in this phase, the knowledge is gathered from the identified sources, whatever they may be within your organization. Uh, it could be your own record management system, uh, your CAD system, um, booking information, whatever that information is um, that you need to gather. So you, you need to um, gather that information from your identified sources, uh, place in whatever formats or databases that have been chosen for storage, uh, and forward to the experts, authorities, and learning professionals to confirm, correct, and expand on. When they have established that the material is accurate and up to date, it's made accessible to, to whomever will benefit from it. So if you're beginning, um, I'm just going to go back several decades, but if you're beginning to go from an old um, Rolodex card file record management system to a uh, new knowledge management system where things are going to be computerized, then you have to have means in which to transfer that data from the old way, the three of the five cards, into your records management system. And so that needs to be um, compiled, it needs to be confirmed, it needs to make sure that things are entered correctly, addresses are entered correctly, uh, names are entered correctly, uh, before that knowledge can then be circulated. All right, because you need to make sure that it's gathering the information that you need for it to gather and it's gathering it correctly. So you need to confirm that what's being entered is what's going to come out the other end once your system gets to be up and running. Finally, is maintain the knowledge system because knowledge is dynamic and always changing. The system that stores and disseminates it must all must disseminates it must allow easy updating whenever possible. Establishing system ownership and ongoing maintenance plan is key to success. The learning professional may be the coordinator of the process, or this could be a separate role that the organization develops as the chief knowledge officer. So again, once the system is up and running, whatever that system you uh, end up um, using, uh, you need to make sure that it's maintained, that it's updated. Uh, as technology changes, computer systems can be upgraded. Uh, to me, the perfect example is if you own any, let's say, Apple product, your iPhone, your iPad, uh, your computer, there are updates, and those updates are making your system, in theory, more efficient, so you have access to the type of information that you want or you need. Uh, the same way with any type of knowledge management system using law enforcement. Uh, those systems need to be maintained and they need to be updated when necessary. Um, and those are the additional costs that are associated with any knowledge management system because uh, if you have a knowledge management system that it requires upgrades, then you need to figure out in terms of your organization how much those upgrades are going to cost so you make sure that you have money in your budget so that you can address those upgrades when those upgrades uh, become necessary. All right, so these are the basic steps if you're going to implement a knowledge management system uh, within your organization. Now, the main components of any knowledge management system are three basic components. And those components are going to be people, process, and technology. All right, so those are the main components of a knowledge management system. People are the main component. People contribute the majority of the knowledge. They make use of it and validate it or revise it based on their success with it. So people have to use the information and so they're going to validate whether or not that knowledge management system is producing uh, information that that group needs or that employee needs and needs to have access to. All right, so people are the main component. Next is going to be process. Process is the way the knowledge is organized and made available to the users. It becomes a communications vehicle that people use to find what they need. And so you can, wherever you work, there's a process for you to access information. Uh, even if it's, for example, when you log in for school, right? Uh, there's a process. Um, 
it's organized, it's made available to you as a user. That's the process. So in theory, when you log into your CBU account and you click on our class and you click on uh, week one activities, there's a list of things there, all right? And when you click on those, those things should open up and function properly. So if there's videos or something uh, along those lines. So people are the main component. Uh, again, people contribute to the majority of the knowledge that goes into it. They make use of it. They validate it. Does it work? Does it not work? And if it doesn't work, based on, for example, your feedback at the end of each term, uh, then things need to be tweaked and things need, need to be changed. Okay, so we've talked about people. We've talked about process. And next is going to be technology. Technology includes the systems that are used to house, search, and maintain the knowledge. This may be software or hardware, internal or external, minimal or broad-based, but it is a tool. Okay, remember, it is just a tool rather than the end product of knowledge management. It's a tool. People access that information, and based on what they're able to access, uh, something happens. So if you're an investigator and you're looking for uh, somebody who goes by the nickname of Hobo, and your computer generates three or four names of a nickname Hobo, that's a tool. You then need to determine, as an investigator, which Hobo is the one you're looking for. So you'll have to do some work. But it's a tool, all right? It's not going to give you all the answers necessarily. It's a tool for us to use uh, to make our work a little bit more efficient and a little bit more effective. So those are the three key parts of the knowledge management system. Again, it's the people, it's the process, and it's the technology, okay? Uh, getting close again here, does knowledge management system need a chief knowledge officer? So is there a need for uh, an organization to integrate all, all knowledge management information that an entity creates? Uh, you can answer that on your own. I would say that there is. Um, and that's from personal experience. Um, in the late 1990s, we got a new city manager, uh, and prior to him arriving, basically each department had its own little, its own little uh, knowledge management system. Uh, nothing was integrated, nothing was connected. Uh, one of the first things he did was create an IT department, hire a guy to be the chief knowledge officer, or um, whatever one may want to call those. Uh, that is important. Um, and that helps, I think, overall give a proper direction to the organization, whether it be a city or a county, uh, as a means to make sure that uh, tax dollars are spent effectively and efficiently, uh, and that everything is coordinated and everything uh, makes sense. So we don't have a separate system in the fire department, a separate system in the police department. Those systems can't talk to each other or a police department system can't talk to the system at City Hall. All of these systems have information. And the question becomes, you know, how do we coordinate that or how do we at least make sure that there is a, a level of effectiveness that uh, is associated with the integration of our knowledge management system. And getting things done, uh, do you see gaps and lost opportunities in the way your organization manages knowledge? Is your organization structured to use its experts fully? Uh, do we capture all the information? Do we make, do we make things more effective and more efficient uh, for our employees? And is that information easily accessible to our employees? Okay. Uh, before I close, I just want to tell you a little story about when um, in the late 1970s and probably maybe 1980, uh, the city of Ontario, the police chief decided to implement, uh, he, was, he was into technology even at that time implemented uh, a knowledge management system. It was uh, basically, it was a record management system, RMS. First computerized system in the department. Uh, and I can tell you that um, it was very difficult for him because people didn't want to use it. We like the old three by five cards. We like to go to the Rolodex. Uh, people weren't willing to access records information through the computer. Uh, maybe it's because people were afraid or computers were new. Uh, remember, cops don't like change. One of the ways he got around that, and I thought was pretty creative, was um, for the next series of promotional tests, uh, part of the uh, application process was you had to demonstrate that you knew how to use a computer uh, records management system by finding specific information and sort of filling in the blanks. It was sort of like a test, and you submitted that with your application. Anyway, I thought that was clever. 
Uh, anyhow, knowledge management system. I hope this helps. If not, you uh, know how to get a hold of me.